unbelievable. I don't think any one particular of the indictments you know, is certainly not going to sway my, my, my stance one way or another. Trump is leading the Republican field for the 2024 nomination. Since the first indictment in March, national public polls have shown around half of Republican voters supporting Trump. CNN asked Republican voters how another possible indictment in Georgia could impact their vote. My name is Gary Overchad. I live here in Alpharetta. This whole thing with Trump, he, it, it's BS. That's the best way to say it. Yes, you can see it clearly. This is CNN. How people still perceive this. Taking a look at what Ron DeSantis said recently, I'm disturbed. I don't know if this is the right time to say this. He recently had this interview on Fox News. This is what he had to say. Ron DeSantis accused Donald Trump of not doing enough to drain the swamp, saying he was partly to blame for his liquor wars. Yeah, um, that's a crime. <laughs> that statement or quote in and of itself is not necessarily damning. CNN asked voters in the Atlanta suburb of Alpharetta to listen to a short clip of a call President Donald Trump had with Georgia's Republican Secretary of State, Brad Raffensperger. That January 2021 call kicked off the local district attorney's investigation into Trump's efforts to overthrow the 2020 election. If Trump hopes to win in 2024, he will likely have to win over politically moderate suburbs like this one. All I want to do is this. I just want to find 11,780 votes, which is one more than we have, because we won the state. So do you think there's anything? There's nothing wrong with that. No, it's not illegal. I think that's ridiculous, that call that he made. It's like you can't accept a loss, and which is very, it's very sad. For the president of the United States to question that is just unbelievable. I don't think any one particular of the indictments you know, is certainly not going to sway my, my my stance one way or another. Trump is leading the Republican field for the 2024 nomination. Since the first indictment in March, national public polls have shown around half of Republican voters supporting Trump. CNN asked Republican voters how another possible indictment in Georgia could impact their vote. My name is Gary Overchad. I live here in Alpharetta. This whole thing with Trump, he, it, it, it's BS. That's the best way to say it. The indictment plays no role in how I'm going to vote. The way I vote will depend on the policies and the people that, that I'm voting for. We need to elect people who have some integrity and who have some a character that we, we're not getting that anymore. Unfortunately, I think that that's not the first time that that type of conversation has not occurred before. I don't approve of it. Uh, I am not up on legalities enough to know if this is an indictment is the right way to go it. If Biden and Trump run against each other, I can't support either one of them. It's just part of a pattern of, of behavior and the rules don't apply to me that I think is just inappropriate. So it caused me to lose support for Donald Trump. If somehow he gets the nomination, I'm afraid I'm going to have to go to the polls and hold my nose and hit Donald Trump. Yes, you will see clearly how this indictment has no impact. Democrat thought by doing all these would turn a lot of people away from him. But instead, on daily basis, the population keep realizing what is going on. Before this indictment, something happened. They now release a statement pertaining to this. They told us initially it was fictitious, but what I've realized they did that intentionally. According to this article from the New York Post, mishap led to release of fictitious Trump Grand Jury dog, Fulton County Clerk Office Amid. They are now admitting something we knew. A mishap led to the release of a sample working document listing charges against former President Trump as before his indictment in Georgia became official. The Fulton County Clerk Office reviewed Tuesday the two page doc get posted on the office website Monday shows the 77 year old former president facing 13 counts related to his alleged effort to overturn the 2020 election result in Page State. They now admit this was a mistake. 
what kind of mistake they did that we all know the tips of the media you know on situation like this but this is concerning this week and on the same day that another big story was breaking about the hunter biden probe raising quite a few eyebrows about the timing of all of this so let's break down the timeline of trump's indictments versus the key developments in the hunter saga so the fbi releases the documents alleging that the bidens took the 10 million dollar bribe from burisma remember the uh, owner of burisma caught in the coffee shop saying five million for one biden five million for another then the very next day look at this jack smith and Indicts Trump in the Mar-a-Lago document case. Then on July 26, that's the Hunter Biden sweetheart deal that's rejected. The very next day, July 27th, Jack Smith adds more charges in the Mar-a-Lago case. Let's slap some more charges to that. All right. So then in July, let's go to D.C. Devin Archer interview versus Trump's third indictment. So this was the January 6th stuff. July 31st, Devin Archer testifies that Joe Biden was on 20 plus phone calls with his son's business partners. The very next day. Jack Smith indicts Trump for the January 6th case. Coincidence? We don't know. You decide. All right, now let's go to Georgia. This happened uh, recently, the last few days. FBI agent transcript versus Trump's fourth indictment. So in the morning, on August 14th, GOP releases the transcripts from this FBI agent involved in the Hunter Biden investigation. And it has it happens to uh, coincide with what the whistleblower was saying, that they someone tipped off, the Secret Service tipped off Hunter Biden. He was never interviewed. So their stories are very similar. So then on August 14th, that same day, later in the afternoon or that night and that evening, Fulton County DA Fonnie Willis charges Trump and 18 others in the Georgia 2020 election probe. You have the facts. You make you make up your mind. Your decision is this. A At this level, is it the coincidence? I really want to know because it is always like this. When you look at the days of the trials, they are put up. They are just in line. When campaigns will be up, that is where we'll be talking about court. The two odd ones. What message are you trying to tell us? So the people, you know, should be hearing what you're talking called and the campaign. Let's keep our finger crossed to see what will happen because it has actually reached a certain level. Some says it's a revolution, which when it will start, they can't stop. I say, yes, these prosecutions are wrong. But um, I, I, I can understand that. But there are 91 criminal charges in all, Vivek, as you're aware over four criminal cases, they, they can't all be politicized, can they? I mean, there, there's something that the former president must have done in any one of these that struck you as wrong, if not illegal. I think, Neil, just because the government has brought a case, if we're going to be a culture that now starts to say there must be something wrong, if the government has charged 91 counts, I think that's a, gov that's a people of sheep. And when the people behave like sheep, that breeds a government of wolves. Well, you